Hi, Facebook family. I wanted to jump on here and talk to you today um, about something that I've been noticing in the body of Christ. And hopefully I can share a little wisdom. Um, so let me just start with prayer. Well, Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus that you would come and open up hearts and minds. And I ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in Jesus' name. So I have been noticing this explosion of emotionalism happening like all over the place. It is like out of control. And I can't believe what I'm seeing as I'm looking at believers who can't seem to get it together and who are being led by how they feel and not by the word of God. And so I just wanted to jump on here and I wanted to say some things about that and hopefully it'll benefit somebody or somebody maybe somebody needs to hear this um and so i wanted to tell you a testimony my own personal testimony um i was about 10 years into my life in christ and uh my daughter had a uh um diving accident and uh she ended up uh, being a quadriplegic so I became her full-time caregiver. And in doing so, about a year into this, my life was pretty much in the garbage. There wasn't a whole lot going on because I was stuck to her like glue. So I'm doing everything from cathing her to bathing her to doing her hair and her makeup. I'm dressing her, I'm feeding her, I'm taking her back and forth to school, and I have six other kids. So there's the scenario, okay? This is my, by the way, this is my stepdaughter. She's not my natural daughter. I love her. She, she was an amazing young woman. Anyway, so um, I'm driving after about a year of this. I'm getting up in the middle of the night every two hours to turn her. I don't see my friends. I don't see uh, my, even a lot of my other children. So I say all of this to tell you something because I was stuck in a situation. I was hemmed in in a situation where I couldn't get out. And I had no exit strategy. There was no exit strategy. I was the only one that could take care of her. Um, and the Lord very clearly said, you know, this is what you're going to do. She will know me through your love. And so I just faithfully, day after day, took care of her. Um, and she was emotionally in a pretty bad place, you know, as you can imagine. And so I, she wasn't like, oh, thanks for taking care of me. She was like, I hate the world. I hate everything. And so, you know, it's like, oh, the one person I know that I can punch in the face is Tracy. And so every day I get punched in the face. Um, so it was a bad situation. And so one day I'm driving in my car and I am having this enormous pity party and feeling pretty bad. And just all of the, you know, things are going off in my head about all of the reasons why I'm in a bad situation and I can't get out. And so I continue, I mean, everything you can imagine, I'm planning, how can I get out of this? Is divorce an option? Is, is and I mean, I'm not kidding you. I'm thinking the most, I, I am in so much pain that was not brought on by myself or my actions, but this circumstance was brought on me. And so my response is trying to be a biblical response. But again, I am, I am literally in, the fire and the pit of hell. And so I'm just, I'm just, it goes on and it goes on and on and on. And this record player's going off. I'm feeling sorry for myself. And you know what the thing I say over and over and over? And I'm hearing this from everybody now, all over social media. I'm just, it's like, it's not fair. It's an injustice. All of these bad things have happened. And so I'm going to have all of these out of control emotions about it. And so I'm driving in my car, and that's exactly where I was. And the Lord broke in, and he said to me, how long are you going to be led by your emotions? And you know, when the Lord breaks in with a question like that, he already knows the answer. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> and he said, you are supposed to be led by my word and my word alone. You don't have the right to have a feeling about these things. What does my word say? And I realized at that moment that I was being led by my emotions and not by the word of God, not by the truth of God. 
And that's exactly what I see happening right now. As I look to the right and I look to the left, and I see this from believers, they are out of control. You see, we are really called to be thermostats. We are temperature setters. We are not temperature responders. We are not called to be thermometers, right? We're not, our emotions, it's like, oh, okay, I feel this way, therefore it must be true. No, that is not right. God's word is the only truth that we know. He is the one that decides. He is the one that, that sets the standard for everything. He sets the standard for how I respond to everything. I don't get to respond out of anger. I don't get to respond out of, out of emotion. I don't get to respond to anything. Because I am no longer my own. I am blood bought and I am submitted. We are submitted to Christ. And we have him on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And I know you already know that. I know I'm preaching to the choir as I say these things. But I'm telling you, man, we got to get a hold of our emotions. We got to grow up and start stop being tossed around. You know, by every wind of doctrine, every kind of emotion that comes our way. And we've got to get our foundation strong. And we've got to take the way we feel to prayer and say, I need you to tell me what you think about this and what you feel about this. And most of the time, he's going to tell you, I don't want you to say nothing about this. I want you to pray about it. In, in the book of Acts, when Peter was arrested unjustly, treated in an unjust way what 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 were the disciples doing what were they doing were they breaking things were they angry were they creating a mob were they out with signs were they yelling and screaming no they were in the house and they were contending in prayer and it was through their prayer that opened up the jail cell and an angel walks in and he's like hey wake up peter your friend sent me and that's the power of prayer. That's the power of following the word of God instead of following our emotions. And so what happened through that is righteousness and justice of heaven and earth met in that place. And it happened. I mean, I am tired of listening to a bunch of crybabies whine over all of the bad things that happened to us. I mean, get in a line Jesus told us that we would have bad things happen to us. But he also said that because I overcame, you too will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. So it's time for all of us to grow up. Yes, bad things happen to, to all different races of all different kinds. We've all had hardship. We've lost loved ones. You know, my daughter died six months ago. Um, but I get out of bed every morning and I put on my, I put on the word of God. I clothe myself in the word of God. I do not stay in bed depressed over it. I am, I am an overcomer because I have Christ living on the inside of me and I'm victorious. Nowhere in God's word does he say you get to be a crybaby. Nowhere in God's word does it say that you get to be a victim. You do not get that right. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We are empowered to overcome. And we're supposed to be a witness to the truth and show the world what an overcoming church looks like. And the church right now needs to wake up and begin to set the standard and the temperature for what is happening in the earth. That love will reign. That this is the truth. This is the truth. I'm sorry bad things happen to you. I'm sorry, Rep let's all just repent and move on down the road because we have a kingdom to advance. And let us not get stuck in victim victimization and victim mentality, but let's move on as overcomers. Let's pick up our brothers and sisters who have fallen and dust them off and help them to know the truth and help them to overcome. We do that by prophesying. We do that by raising a standard of, 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 of truth by showing them, here's the fruit of the Spirit. Here's how, how we should be operating. We should, we're peacemakers. We should be making peace. We, are, um, we should be extending love. We should be speaking the truth in love. And we should be saying, listen, I understand how you feel, 
But those feelings do not reign over what God's truth is. Here's what God's truth is. You know, there is a kingdom to be had. There is loss to be saved. There are people to be healed. You know, we got to heal all those people with the corona rona, whatever that was. I don't know. But we've got to heal it. And we've got to speak the truth in love. And then we've got to move these people out of their pity party. We've got to move them out of victimization and say, come on, man, we're stronger than this. Christ has made us strong. Therefore, we can all gather together, pray together, and set the captives free. So, thank you for letting me um, share my heart and just tell you that I love you. And I know that together we can do this because Christ has strengthened us to do this. And he overcame, therefore, we can overcome together. So, let's pray, get the word of the Lord, and begin to release God's truth and love. And pray. Prayer will change things. Bless you.